Hey guys, what's up? I mean, that is to say, greetings everyone. I hope you're enjoying good health and pleasant weather. Anyhow, let's take a look at subsets today. And let's define it first. A subset is, as it says, a set whose members are included in another set. Okay, so let's look at two sets we have. There is set B with the fancy uh, parentheses. It includes one and two, and there's set A. It has one, two, and three. So now we can say B is a subset of A. In other words, <clears throat> the members of B, set B are a subset of the members of subset, or excuse me, of, sub, of set A. Uh, so it wouldn't be reversed. A wouldn't be a subset of B because A has more members than B. It's just a lot of, you know, complicated nonsense really, but uh, some strange looking uh, symbols and that kind of thing. It, it's just, uh, it's pretty simple. Let's do a couple of examples here. Um, in a second, let's look at this. The second thing we need to talk about is an empty or a null set. Null means nothing. That's a Latin term, nil. Um, as in like the word nullify, to make a law into nothing. That's where we get the word null. Anyhow, the, an empty or a null set is a set with no numbers in it. And you can do this two ways if you want. You can just go like this with a zero with a right through it. <clears> That's <throat> nothing. Or you can just draw like an empty set like this with nothing inside it. And that's your way of indicating that there is no example of a number that fits that description. Okay. Now let's look for example. Um, and of course B is a subset of A because every member of the set of B is also in the set of A. All right. And here's the, we'll get to the nitty gritty here. Here's how we use this. You're given three sets in this one, okay? A set D is zero, one, and two. Uh, let's go down to G for a oh, second. <coughs> Excuse me, G is one, three, and five. And then if you look at set E, well, that is one, two, three, and then those, that you know, ellipsis means that it just keeps going forever and ever in the positive direction. So, you tell me which statements are true and which ones are dirty lies, all right? First off, is this a true statement? Is E a subset of G? In other words, is E a smaller uh, set that is included in G? And that's gonna have to be a dirty lie, or false, I guess, if you wanna make it you know, nicer sounding, okay? Because E is not a little part of the subset of G. Okay, E is way bigger than G. And in fact, you know, uh, E is a, has a two in it as well, which is not a part of, of set G. Is G a subset of E? Well, let's take a look. In other words, is every member of G also a member of the set E? Well, this is a member. Yep, that works. Is three a member? Yep, that works. And is five a member? We don't see a five here, but we realize that what we're saying here with that ellipsis, again, is that it keeps going four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, on to infinity. So yes, that is true. All right. How about D being a subset of E? Is that true? Well, let's take a look at D first. Here's D. Does, in other words, does this slide easily into E and maybe have some left over, maybe have the same? Well, if you look immediately, you realize, well, one and two are fine. That, that works. But the zero that's a part of uh, set D is not a part of set E, so you'd have to say that is false or a dirty lie. Okay, they're practical. One, one, one way we're going to look at those. Okay, the this you make sure on this you need to write this down. This is very important. Um, <clears throat> knowing these subsets of the set of real numbers, which is we'll talk about that in a second. Knowing this list is really important. I strongly urge you to. Um, get a like a four by six card and just absolutely write these down. You need to have these just sitting by you all the time. Put it somewhere in your math notebook where you can look at it easily and find it easily because you're going to have these questions over and over. And the faster and the more you know the definition of all those sets of numbers, the better it's going to be. You're going to it's you're, you're going to be doing things like SATs or higher math or college classes or any, things like that. And knowing these right off the top of your head is going to be a huge help to you in doing well in those math classes. So let's just define these. And what we're going to do is just write these as sets 
and you'll look back at these and go, oh yeah, that's what that means, and so on, okay? So let's start with a natural, or, called, or sometimes called counting numbers, okay? Well, I, you know, I, as you will not be surprised to learn that the natural counting number you start with is a one, okay? And then of course you go two, and then there's three, and so on. So you just keep on going. I'm gonna put a little ellipsis there, okay? Whole numbers, all right, whole numbers, Let's take a look at that. All right, let's make our set here. There is only one difference in the set of whole numbers and the set of natural counting numbers. So there's only one thing, and that is a zero. And then you keep going. Zero, one, two, three, and so on, you know, blah, blah, blah. All right? Notice, I mean, you know, we don't, zero is considered a whole number, but we don't start counting with a zero. In other words, if you eat a giant pizza all by yourself, and your mom says, uh, what did you have for supper? And you go, uh, I had a pizza. You start with one. You don't tell mom, um, uh, I had a, nothing, mom. I had zero pizzas. And your mom goes, why? Well, because I use the whole numbers to start counting. Nobody starts counting the whole numbers. That's the difference. Integers. Here is the set. And this is a word that these two get, sometimes get confused because we, in American English, we kind of use this term whole numbers kind of in the same way as what integers means. And I'll, I'm just going to write the uh, set. And there's an ellipsis going this way, which means I'm starting with it. I'm going to go to, I'll say negative three, negative two, negative one, <clears throat> zero, one, two, three, and so on, and if infinity going that way. In other words, integers, by the way, integers is another Latin word. It means whole, W-H-O-L-E, like a whole uninjured soldier, but like has all of his arms and his legs and all that stuff, hasn't been hurt. <laughs> um, the word integrity comes from that. In other words, your honesty is complete. And what it means is, these are the numbers we would, like in casual conversations, call, oh, these are whole numbers, seven. Negative 50, 83, 112, negative 4, 0, 9, that kind of thing. But they're not considered whole numbers in math because this is your set of whole numbers. Integers means everything going all the way to infinity, includes 0, and then 1, 2, 3, all the way into a positive infinity. Okay, rational numbers is our next one. A ratio, you know, another word to say ratio in arithmetic is a fraction, right? So a rational number is any number that can be expressed as a fraction. That's it. All right, make sure you know that. A rational number is a fraction number. So I mean, you could, you could do, um, maybe we won't, you know, let's just put this, no set. We'll just say can be expressed as a fraction. Okay, for example, you know, I don't know, three-fifths, that's a rational number, okay? Um, <clears throat> you know, you can put the square root of nine, because the square root of nine we know is three. That's a rational number. You can express three as a ratio, right? Because you can always put it over one, which means basically any integer is also a rational number, because if you put, you know, negative 52, can you express negative 52 as a fraction? Yes, you just stick it over one. There you go. If you put 0.2, that's, you know, you can put that over one. That's fine, okay? All right? There are two types of irrational numbers, two basic types, and I'll show you those in a second. But if you know the definition of rational number, surely you automatically know the definition of irrational number, right? It's a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction. Okay, cannot be expressed as a fraction. Um, not to get too involved in things, but let's remember, when you have any fraction on Earth, anything in the world, it will either do one of two things. It will uh, terminate. In other words, if somebody says to you one half, you're going to go, that's 0.5. And you'd be right. It terminates right there. If somebody says to you one third, you might know that that is 0.33333333. In other words, it just keeps repeating. You put a little bar over that's the only two choices you have for rational numbers. That is all. doesn't matter if it's 17 over 106. It's still, at some point, going to repeat as a decimal, or it will terminate. 106 won't. 
All right, so an irrational number can not be expressed as a fraction, okay? And you should know there are two basic types of irrational numbers. The first one is a very famous term in math, and it is called pi. And that's, of course, uh, we know that's the number of times a diameter will fit around the circle that it's a part of. That's the first one. Pi apparently never repeats as a decimal like this, you know, repeats, or it, it doesn't terminate, of course. <clears throat> All right? The other type is this type. The square root of, now we, let's say for example, we all know, let's say the square root of 25 is five, right? If somebody puts it on there, the square root of 25, is that rational? You'd go, okay, the square root of 25 is five. Can I write five as a fraction? Yeah, I just stick it over one. Yep, it's a rational number. But something like this, let's say the square root of 26. Is there any integer that matches that? In other words, is the answer to the square root of 26, uh, 26 an integer or not? It's not. So the answer is it's an irrational number, which means uh, that this, if you go and figure it out, even on a calculator, the, dec the decimals never repeat like they would a rational number like 1 over 3 or 1 over 2, or they terminate in that case. So those are the two types. The first type is pi for irrational numbers. The second type is a square root of a number like the square root of 7 or the square root of 51 or the square root of 5 or something like that that would be an irrational number because you can't express it as a fraction. All right, real numbers are defined this way. Any number, that says number, on the number, that says number, line. Any number on a number line is a real number. We'll get to, we'll get to there is such a thing as called uh, imaginary numbers, which we'll get to in Algebra 2. But a real number is anything at all. In other words, you know what a number line looks like. There it is. There is the zero. It can be anything. That number, this number over here, there, 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 whatever. Now, question for you. Are natural counting numbers on a number line? Of course they are. They're, you know, let's just call this one. There they are. Okay. All right. Are whole numbers on a number line? Yep. There's a zero. I mean, it's on a number line somewhere, right? Integers, are they on a number line? Are, in other words, are they real numbers? And the answer is yes. I mean, look, there's your no, negative one, negative three, let's just call this negative three. Yep, there, that's a real number. Are rational numbers on a number line? Are they real numbers? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could say, let's say that's two. I know that's not right, but let's just say that's, you know, one and one half. Is that a rational number? Yeah, it can be expressed as a fraction, so it's a real number. An irrational number, this is where it goes, oh, maybe, I don't know. Well, I mean, there's one, we'll call this two, we'll call that three, and then there's four. Is pi somewhere in there? Yeah, it's, it's there somewhere, it's on a number line, so even irrational numbers are real numbers. Now, the square root of 26, don't know exactly what that is. It's a little more than the square root of 25, which is five, there's a five. Is the square root of 26 on this number line somewhere? Yeah, it's somewhere there. Okay, so it's a real number as well. So, in other words, all of these are real numbers. Everything, you know, our whole list is real numbers. Okay, put, a, put those on a card. Make those little examples or definitions for yourself. Make sure you have that easily accessible all the time. The rest of the year you do Algebra 1, it'll help you a lot. Okay, all right, let's get a couple of examples, all right? So, one half, is it a member uh, of, you know, what sets, subsets of the real numbers is one half a member of, in other words, okay? So let's go back, you know, all of our uh, numbers here, I'm gonna erase this, okay? My question to you, let's go with one half, okay? Is one half a member of the natural counting numbers? No, nobody goes around saying, well, how many brothers do you have, uh, a half? Okay, that's not a, not a counting number. So one half is not a member of this, no. Is it a whole number? Is it a member of zero, one, two, three, four, five, no. Okay, is it an integer? No, it's not an integer either. Is it a rational number? In other words, is it possible to make a fraction out of it? Well, yes, it is a fraction. So yes, it is a rational number. So if it's, an, if it's a rational number, by definition, it's not an irrational number. 
Is it on the number line somewhere? In other words, is it a real number? Is there a zero and there's a one? Oh, we can, we can put one half. Is it there somewhere? Yes. So it is also a real number. And that's how we're going to look at things. That's the kind of questions they're going to ask you from now on. Which part, which subset of the real numbers does this number belong to? Okay, let's go to five. All right, five. So we'll go to five next. Okay, let's pick this off of here and try five. All right, first off is five part of the counting numbers. Yeah, you count, you know, uh, you know, my mother spent one, two, three, four, five hours in Hobby Lobby today. Yes, that's correct. So yeah, that's part of the counting numbers, all right? Whole numbers, we know it's the same thing except for a zero. So yep, those two, yes. Integers, look at your picture of your integers on your card or your paper or whatever you have it on now. Is five gonna be on there? Yes, it will, okay? That's the number we sometimes, you know, casually mention, uh, talk, to, uh, talk about as if it's a whole number, okay? A rational number, can you make a fraction out of the number five? Yes, you can. You put it over a one, it's part of that. Well, by definition, it's not part of that then, right? Real number, is five a real number? Is it on the number line somewhere if you drew a number line? Yes, it is, bam, there you go. Okay? It's part of five different subsets, all right? Let's go to three times the square root of two. Blech. Okay, three times the square root of two. All right, let's erase here again. So three times the square root of two. Well, first off, do you use three times the square root of two as something that you naturally count with? No, okay, don't even try. Okay, whole numbers, look at your, look at your picture of your whole numbers. Nope, it just starts with a zero, so no and no. Integers? No, it's not one of those. Rational numbers, um, by definition, look at that square root. Do you know what the square root of two is? I mean, excuse me, is there, an, is there an answer to that, whether the answer is an integer, like seven or 20 or three or something like that? No, okay? So this cannot, numbers with square roots cannot be expressed as a fraction because the decimal doesn't repeat and the decimal doesn't terminate. So the answer to that is no. Well, if it ain't rational, it's irrational, so it matches that one. Is it a real number? In other words, can you draw a number line and stick on there somewhere three times the square root of two on the line? Yes, you can. In other words, here's a zero. The square root of two is about 1.4. Okay, times three is, you know, let's say this is a four and this is a five. Well, it's gonna be somewhere right there. It's on there, it's on the number line, it's a real number, boom, there you go. So that's the subsets of uh, three of square root of two. Oops, all right, are these true or false? True or false, okay? Are real numbers a subset of the integers? In other words, are real numbers a small part of this set of integers? Think for a second. You can pause it if you want to. Are reals a small part of the integers? Well, here are real numbers. Like if you drew a number line, let me just draw a different color here. On this. Here's a number line. Here are all the real nothing. Let's, let's say this is zero. All the reals are like everything. Now integers are just one, two, three, and then of course negative one, negative two, negative three. Are, is everything here a small part of just the integers? No. You would say, well we'll get to that in a second, okay? Are irrationals a small part of the rationals? No, by definition, irrationals are not rationals, so that doesn't make any sense at all. Now let's flip this first one. Are integers a small part or a subset of the reals? Well, if you look at this, I mean, there's an infinite number of integers, right? But there's even more, I'm not sure there's a, there's a philosophical question there somewhere, is this infinity more, more than this infinity? But <coughs> integers, are a smaller part of all of the reals because the reals not only in, in, in include the integers, but they also include every teeny little number infinity. There's, there's an infinity of numbers between negative three and negative two. So integers are a small part of all the real numbers which make up every single number on the number line, infinity. Okay, irrationals, are they a small part of the reals? <clears throat> well, Remember, real numbers is just every single thing all the way across this entire everything. Are irrationals a little subset of that? Yeah, we would say, in other words, like irrationals would include, you know, 
over here is pi. And then, you know, let's say this, I don't know, we'll say uh, way, way over here, we'll say, let's say the square root of 11 or something like that. That's an irrational number. The square root of 11 is somewhere between 3 and 4. Um, it's on there. There aren't as many irrational numbers as there are real numbers. So that's, that is a subset. Our whole numbers is small part of the natural numbers. Well, natural numbers, don't forget, are counting numbers, okay? So are wholes a small part of naturals? Well, you know, whole number is this. Zero, one, two, three, and then forever. Naturals, which are counting numbers, are one, two, three, and so on. So you wouldn't say that wholes are a subset of this. It'd be the opposite. Naturals are a subset of this, because this one includes everything the holes have and a zero. Okay. All right, look at your practice set. Go ahead and pause it, and we'll come together in a second here. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's look at this. I'm just going to read this. <clears throat> so given the sets A, B, and C, tell which of the following assertions are true, which ones are dirty or false, excuse me, and why. Is B a subset of A? Well, B is 0, 2, 4, and 6. A is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So it doesn't include, well, let's see, is B a subset of A? A would include 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and, and infinity. So B would be, yes, B is a small part of A. Okay. Two, is B a subset of C? Well, you can tell that those numbers are totally different, so that's false, or if you prefer a dirty line. C, excuse me, three, is C a subset of A? Well, there's C, there's A. Is C a small part of A? In other words, would A include one, three, five, and seven? And the answer is yes. So that is true, all right? So let's go to B. You pause if you need to. <clears throat> okay, 11 over six is a subset of which numbers? And let me just get back to where we were before. And let's take a look. That looks pretty messy. Okay, so 11 over 6 oops, is a subset of which numbers? Well, is it a natural counting number? No. Is it a whole number? No. Is it an integer? No. Is it a rational number? Well, 11 over 6 is a ratio, right? So, yes, there you go. Is it an irrational number? Obviously not, if it's a rational number. Is it a real number? In other words, is 11 over 6 something you can stick on the number line somewhere? And the answer, of course, is yes. You'd stick it between 1 and 2. Oh, there you go. Okay? Pause it for C. All right? Point 0.62. Which set does that belong to? Nobody counts with point 0.62. It's not a whole number. It's not an integer. So all those are gone. It, can, you, can you make point 0.62 into a fraction? Is it a rational number? The answer is yes. You'd stick it over 1. Or you can just say 62 over 100 or 31 over 50. <clears throat> All right? So yes, by definition, it's not irrational. And of course, it is on the number line somewhere, which makes it a real number. Okay, pause it and try D. Okay, D is 4. Is 4 one of the natural counting numbers? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, it's just one that you count, obviously. Okay. Is it a whole number? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you, there it was. Yes. Is it an integer? Yes, it's an integer. Is it a rational number? Can you write 4 as a fraction? Yes, you can. 4 over 1. Okay. Obviously, it's not irrational. Is it a real number? Is it on the number line? 4? Yes, it is. Well, there you go. All right, E. Pause if you need to. Okay, 2 times the square root of 2. It's obviously not something you count with. It's obviously not a whole number if you look at your set of whole numbers. It's obviously not an integer. Uh, is it a rational number? By definition, the two types, excuse me, let's, we'll, we'll, let's do irrational first. Is it an irrational number? And by definition, the two types of irrational numbers are pi and numbers with square roots that don't work out evenly with answers as integers, like the square root of 16 is 4. That's not one of those, so it is, it is irrational. By definition, it's not rational then. Is it a real number? Can you stick it somewhere on the number line? Yes, absolutely. Okay, last one is F. Go ahead and pause it. All right, negative 4. <clears throat> do, do you count anything on Earth using the word negative 4? No. How many brothers do you have? Uh, negative 4. Okay, no. Okay. Is it a whole number? No, because whole numbers start with 0 and go to the positive. 
integer? Yes, it is an integer. So if you continue, look at your, if you have that little card, look at the picture of the integers. You know, it goes backwards from, in, you know, to negative one, negative two, negative three, to infinity. So yes, negative four is the next number on that list. So yes, negative four is an integer. It's not a positive integer, it's a negative integer. Okay, is it a rational number? Can you make negative four into a fraction? Yes, you stick it over one. There you go. By definition, not irrational. And is it a real number? <clears throat> In other words, is it on the number line somewhere? The answer is yes. And there you go. Okay. All right. Hope y'all had a good day and talk to you next time.